Um, a couple of you uh, stated that you were having a little trouble with the whole first pass metabolism thing. And so let me go through that a little bit. Now, before we even talk about the first pass metabolism business, um, we have to talk about the ways you get drugs into the bloodstream. In pharmacology, the thing that we can measure is drug levels in the bloodstream. That's the easiest thing to measure. And therefore, all pharmacology is based around this idea of getting the drugs to a certain amount, level in the blood. So you can get drugs to the bloodstream in a variety of ways. Let's talk about those, okay? First, you can uh, give it into the blood vessels, especially if you give it IV, right? Now, so if you give a drug IV, you're putting that drug directly into the bloodstream. So what we call the bioavailability, the, the amount of drug that got into the bloodstream in order to do its thing is 100% in IV because you put it right into the bloodstream. You can also put it in the arteries, uh, but generally speaking, IV is the way to go. So that's like 100% bioavailability, fastest way to get drugs into the bloodstream. Um, the other way, another way that you can do it is to um, put the drug somewhere in the body and then it'll eventually sort of soak into capillaries, into veins, and then get into your body. So that could be, you know, topical or inhaled or um, you could uh, smear it all over yourself. Uh, you could inject it intramuscularly, subcutaneously. Um, there's, you know, pretty much any, any way of getting the drug into the bloodstream other than IV. Um, so that's another way of doing it, right? Another, another way you can put the drug into the body is you can directly inject it into an area of immune privilege. And that would be places like your brain and your spinal cord, you know, because they've got the blood-brain barrier, right? Um, and also the eyes and in men, testes, um, are all places that have immune privilege. And getting drugs from the bloodstream by putting it in the eye, brain, or testes is not the greatest way. Because if you're trying to get a drug to eventually end up in the brain, uh, you have to be careful because a lot of drugs can't cross that blood-brain barrier. So that's kind of a weird thing. Um, and then the, the other common way of getting drugs into the bloodstream is called the enteral way. All right, for me, enteral uh, suggests that you've gotten the drug into the body by somehow getting it into the stomach or the intestines. Uh, and enteral to me means stomach through to the top third of the rectum, all right? Now the thing that's special about the enteral system is that um, all of the veins draining from the stomach, the intestines, all right? The first place they go is the portal vein. And the portal vein goes directly to uh, the liver. All right, so now let's think about it. Let's not worry about the CNSIs and testes. Let's think about these other main ways of getting drugs into your body. If you put the drug into a, directly into a blood vessel by using an IV, what happens is that drug goes from the vein you put it in to the vena cava, right? Then to the right heart, the lungs, the left heart, then the body. All right. And so let's say, let's be generous and say that, you know, 10% of all the blood in your body goes to the liver, all right? So that means that 10% of the drug that you get absorbed into the body, however much you get absorbed into the body, is gonna to go to the liver. If it's IV, it's 100% of it, is uh, only 10% of it goes to the liver on the first pass around your body because it first goes to the lungs, the heart, then to the aorta, some of that goes to your head, some of it goes to the rest of your body, right? So not all of it goes to the liver, only like 10% goes to the liver. All right, so let's say 10%, just to make it, the numbers easy. Similarly, if you smear it all over your skin or inhale it or inject it into a muscle or, on, or into some fatty tissue, um, that all is gonna drain into little capillaries, which then go to veins, then go to inferior vena cava, right heart, left, uh, right heart, lungs, left heart, body, right? And from there, let's say 10% of it goes to the liver. But if you swallow the pill or the elixir or whatever, or you stick a tube down there and sh put the drug directly into the stomach, all, all of that drug that is absorbed, the first time it goes around your body, 100% of it goes to the liver. Okay? So if 100% of uh, the drug here goes to the liver, that means that it's much more likely to be metabolized. So let's talk about the metabolism. So when we talk about metabolism in pharmacology, we aren't talking about, you know, how easy it is for you to gain or lose weight after you eat a piece of cheesecake. What we're talking about is a process of biotransformation of the molecules, of the molecules of the drugs, okay? So biotransformation, which is a fancy schmancy way 
of just saying that somehow your biology of your body changes the molecule. Right. So that change in the molecule is generally to deactivate it in most cases that we talk about in this class, um, uh, to deactivate it so that it can no longer bind a receptor or do whatever it's supposed to do. Um, and also the biotransformation generally makes the molecule easier to excrete. So uh, maybe it'll make it more ionized so it's more water soluble so it'll leave in the body and urine more easily. So there you go, that's metabolism. Now for most of the drugs that we're gonna talk about in this class, uh, yeah, I'd say most of them, um, that place, the area where the drug is metabolized is the liver. Okay? So every time uh, the, bot, the drug circulates throughout the bloodstream, some percentage of that blood goes to the liver, right? I mean, because that's the way your body works. Heart pumps blood, blood goes to all the different organs in every part of your body, and part of that blood is going to the liver. All right, so if the drug is, already, is just in the veins, so you, say you give it just IV, uh, or if you give it, let's, uh, I want to talk about nicotine as an example. So let's say nicotine, there's a bunch of different ways you can take it. You can give it topically, all right, in the form of a patch. And you know me, I like topical, I think uh, uh, gum, I consider that not to be enteral. And you'll understand why after we're done talking about this. Um, so you can give it as a patch or give it as a gum. Right, you can smoke it, which is the way most people uh, ingest or intake their nicotine. Uh, or you can take a pill. You can say, okay, well, I can make it as a patch, I can make it as gum, or I can make it as a pill. So let's do an example of nicotine. All right, nicotine. And let's say that you decide to make a patch with 10 milligrams in it of nicotine, or you can make some gum that's 10 milligrams, right? Now the gum, the patient chews it, and the spit is then absorbed through the mouth, right? So that's, that's how gum works. Um, or you could give it as a pill with the intention that the patient will take it and swallow it. All right, if you give this nicotine as a patch or gum, what happens is the drug is absorbed through the skin or it's absorbed through the uh, mucous membranes of the mouth, right? Then from there, the veins collect, they go to the vena cava, then to the right heart, the lungs, the left heart, the body. And then some percentage of that goes to the liver, okay? so. Um, say we're gonna you know, absorb this and some percentage of it goes to the liver. Let's say 10% goes to the liver, okay? Now, if we give the drug as a pill, remember from this lovely picture here, you know, once you swallow it, all the nicotine that's getting absorbed is going directly to the liver. There's, it doesn't get to go anywhere else. The first place it goes is the liver, and then from the liver, it goes into veins, vena cava, right heart, lungs, left heart, body, okay? So if you are gonna take it as a pill, a s swallowed pill, then 100% of the drug goes to the liver on the first pass around the body, right? So the first time the, the drug gets into your body and it you know, is gonna go through your whole body, go through the heart, the lungs, the heart, and then back to your body. That's, you know, let's say that that's one pass, one trip around. Um, if the drug was absorbed topically uh, or inhaled, that's okay too, um, or even given IV, 10% of that is going to end up in the liver because it first has to go to the lungs and the heart before it can even get to the rest of your body. Whereas uh, if you take a pill, 100% of that is going to go through the liver before it even gets back to your heart, lungs, heart, and body. Okay? So if I give the patient 10 milligrams by a patch, and let's say 100, let's say all of it is absorbed, like every little bit of drug in the patch, oh, my cat's meowing in the background, sorry. Let's say you know, all of the drug that you gave in the patch is absorbed into the body. Um, it goes to the heart, lung, heart, body, and 10% of that goes to the liver, which means that after one pass through, um, 10 milligrams was given, all right? 10% of that went to the liver, which will be one milligram. And let's say that the liver about, I think, uh, the liver metabolizes at about a rate of, 20, of 70%, which is pretty high, all right? So it's going to metabolize, and let's say that means break down or inactivate 10% of uh, the original dose, all right? So uh, if there was one milligram that went to the liver, then inactivated, 0.7 times one milligram is gonna be 0.7 milligrams, all right? So 0.7 milligram is inactivated, which leaves 9.3 milligrams to the bloodstream, okay? So after one pass of a 10 milligram dose in a patch or gum, 9.3 milligrams is left, all right? 
Now let's try giving that same dose as a pill. All right, if 100% of it goes to the liver, that means that now 100, that means now that 10 milligrams get to the liver. If 70% of that is inactivated, that means that seven milligrams were inactivated. So three milligrams remain, okay? 70% of 10 milligrams is inactivated seven milligrams, not 0.7 but seven milligrams, all right? Which means that after one pass, goes to the liver, goes to the heart, lungs, heart, body, you have three milligrams left, okay? Certain drugs, a large percentage is metabolized by each pass. So after only one pass, the 10 milligram patch you gave, you have almost all of it left in the bloodstream, but the pill that you gave, you have only three milligrams left because it's 70% deactivated by the liver. Right? So that, that means that now the original dose, the amount that you actually get to the bloodstream is quite a bit lower than if you gave it by any other way, including IV, whatever, inhaled, anything. All right? All right, and I think I gave you guys an example of um, another drug, which is verapamil, um, another example. Uh, verapamil, I think the IV dose is five milligrams, the PO dose, is 125 milligrams. It's 25 times more, right? Because rap the liver uh, biotransforms or metabolizes rapidly at an even higher rate than nicotine. Nitroglycerin that we're going to talk about, uh, that one is biotransformed 95%. So if you gave a dose of nitroglycerin after one pass through the liver, if you gave that dose orally after one pass of the liver, even if you had 100 milligrams to start with, only five milligrams of it get to your bloodstream, which is why you generally prefer to give nitroglycerin in some other way, like as a cream or a patch or uh, something you put under your tongue. All right, so the main points about this concept of first pass metabolism, it, it applies to drugs that are given enterally, all right? Drugs that are absorbed, to me, that means they're absorbed through somewhere in the stomach or the intestines, okay? All right, and it only refers to those enteral drugs because 100% of the drug that gets absorbed, that can be various amounts, okay, uh, goes to the liver. All right. Uh, another thing that first pass metabolism talks about is drugs that, those drugs in particular, that the liver is very good at metabolizing after only one pass, all right? So highly metabolized. All right, so highly metabolized in each pass through the liver. All right, um, another uh, thing that is uh, sort of something to take home about the idea of first pass metabolism is that if you want the equivalent amount of drug to go into the bloodstream, then the oral dose, right, the pill dose, is going to have to be way higher than the dose given other, by other means. That's IV, IM, sub Q, topically inhaled, blah, 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 okay? So the oral dose is gonna have to be a lot higher if you want that same level of drug in the bloodstream because most of the drug is going to be inactivated. If, uh, let's go back to that example of verapamil, okay? So say the oral dose was 125 milligrams and the IV dose was five milligrams, okay? Let's say those are the recommended starting doses for a normal patient who's not sick, all right? And now we have a patient who's got terrible liver dysfunction. Liver doesn't work, right? Horrible liver failure, all right? And that patient is gonna be started on Verapamil. And it's July 1st and you have interns writing the orders. They don't really know what they're doing yet. Um, and they, for this patient, the intern writes an order for 125 milligrams PO. So are you going to question that at all? Well, I would, because if the liver doesn't work, then when you give that 125 milligram dose to that patient, all 125 milligrams are gonna get into the bloodstream. You only want five milligrams to end up in the bloodstream, which is you know, why you would give that smaller dose IV. But if the liver isn't there to metabolize it, all of the dose will go to the bloodstream. And obviously that's 25 times the normal dose. And you know, I don't think you even have to have much experience with pharmacology to know that if you give a patient 25 times their dose they're supposed to have, it's probably not going to end it happily, right? So uh, because the liver doesn't work, you have to reduce the oral dose, all right? So 
generally speaking, with drugs with high first pass metabolism, if there is a patient who has poor liver function, you're going to have to reduce the oral dose. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, if that still doesn't make sense, give me a call. You know how to reach me.